God is good, saints. And he's good all the time. Again, it's good to be here, y'all. Amen. God is, 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 is awesome God. I want you to go with me in your Bible to the book of Daniel chapter 3. I want to preach from a familiar passage dealing with the three Hebrew boys. Amen. Amen. I know y'all have heard this story. Amen. Whole lot of times, probably. Amen. But God always got something new for you. Amen. And the thing I love about His Word is never get old. Amen. Amen. It's relevant all the time. Amen. Just as much as we want to apply it, we can use it. Amen. Just want to read a few verses, and, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you about the rest of it. Amen. 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 Uh, Daniel chapter three, and I want to start with verse 21. And I'm going to read these verses, amen, it says, uh, from the King James Version, Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their outer garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Mm -hmm. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Yeah. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astounded and rose up in haste and spit and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? Yeah. They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lord, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants, of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes and governors and captains and kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power, nor was in the hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him and have changed the king's word, hallelujah, and yielded their body that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Amen. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sorrow. Yeah. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the providence of Babylon. Yeah. Bow your head with me, please. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you again for your word. Yeah. We thank you now, Father God, for opportunity to present your word. We pray that you allow me to present it in a manner that is well-pleasing in your eyesight. Father God, we pray for understanding. We pray for more knowledge. And we ask you to give us wisdom, dear God, that we may be able to comprehend what your spirit is saying in this hour. 
Father God, I pray now that you touch the hearts of the people that are here. Take out their stony heart and give them a heart of flesh. Open their blinded eyes and open their spiritual eyes that they may be able to see and hear what your spirit is saying. Father God, my prayer is that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart may be found acceptable in your sight. For you are our strength and our redeemer. Thank you so much, Father. In the name of Jesus, Amen. let everybody in the house say Amen. 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 Glory Amen. to God. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. From this passage, I had for a thought today a mighty deliverance. Amen. A mighty deliverance. And I'd like to ask the question just for a thought. Can anybody testify that God had worked a mighty deliverance in your life. Amen. 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 I know I can. Amen. If, if I go back to the place when he just delivered me from a world of sin. Come on, somebody. That was a mighty deliverance. Amen. I was in the fiery furnace. Amen. But God brought me out. Y'all yeah. have any witnesses in the house? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. i like to uh, share with you, some of you who may not know what was going on here in this chapter 3. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar had, had made him a great image, an image that was about 75 feet tall and 37 feet wide. And he had made a proclamation that everybody in his kingdom, when they heard the sound of the music, that they were to bow down and worship this image. But there was three men, and we like to call them young men, but by this time, these guys was pretty on in age, amen? They started off three young guys, actually four with Daniel, but by now, these guys, was, had grown pretty old. But they had experience with their God. Amen. And, and, and that's the thing that, 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 that I, 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 I saw that came to mind when I saw this program inspired by their path. I got to thinking about this will line up just with, with this story because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was inspired to stand up against Nebuchadnezzar because of their past. Anybody in the house? Listen, now, as I said earlier, they started off at a young age praising God. These three men and Daniel, they believed, they loved God, they lived for God. They, they saw Daniel do some things and they stood with Daniel. They saw God come through on Daniel's behalf. And here it is now, they are put in that same position and they was willing to take a stand because they was able to look back and realize where God had brought them from and they were able to stand for the Lord. You have anybody here today that, that, that when you start going through, when the enemy start coming at you, you can look back and say, surely he brought me through those hard times, those days in the cotton field, those days in the pea patch, those days when we was pulling corn. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Those nights when you had to get up and go out to the outhouse to use the bathroom. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? When you had to walk a long way just to wash your face and wash your head and you had to take a bath in the same water that your brothers took a bath in. When I look back and see what God did for me back then, I don't have a problem telling the devil whatever he come at me with, he is a liar because I serve a God that's real. Amen, amen. King Nebuchadnezzar, he had, had erected this, this statue and he, he had made a decree that everybody in his, in his provision was to, was to bow down when they heard the sound of the music. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they heard the sound, but they didn't bow down. Amen. Have you ever heard the devil talking to you? 
trying to convince you to do something that you know is not right and you just didn't give in? Do I have anybody in here with that type of testimony today? When the devil came at you with everything he had and you remember what God said that no weapon formed against you shall prosper? Anybody here know what I'm talking about? And you remember what God said that, Lo, I'm with you always until the end of time. Do anybody here remember that when the devil came at you, you remember that Jesus said, I've given you all power in heaven and the earth, and no serpent or no scorpion shall be able to come against you. Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. I believe that being inspired by the love that they had for God. Let me tell you something. It's one thing to know him. It's another thing to love him. Yeah. Anybody here? The problem with the church today, you got a lot of people in the church that know about him, but they don't really love him. I know I'm right about it because when you love God, you, 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 are, you are determined to please him. You're having the witnesses in him. When you love God, you won't let nothing come between you and the love that you have for him. Do I have anybody here know what I'm talking about? When you love God, I don't care what the devil do. I don't care what he say. You're not going to allow him to change your mind about how you feel about your God. King said it at the sound you hear, the clarinet, the December. The cornet and all the instruments. He said, You ought to bow down and worship him. Well, these boys, these men had some guys watching them because they was jealous. Uh -huh. Daniel had gave them a position above them and they was jealous. And so they was watching them, waiting on an opportunity to get rid of them. Right. How many of you know that if you if you're pleasing God, the devil is watching for an opportunity to get rid of you? And when they heard the sound of the music, they didn't bow down. And so the enemy went and told the king. Now I want y'all to understand something. That the king was not an enemy of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He didn't have a problem with them because they actually was in command over his nation. His province, they had areas that they were ruling in, and he allowed them to do that. Uh -huh. So he wasn't their enemies, but he had a problem with the fact that they didn't bow down. And so when the enemy went and told him that they didn't bow down, he was displeased with them. Uh -huh. He was upset, and he felt bad because he felt disrespected. So he called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and had them to come to him. And he said, fellas, paraphrasing, he said, I heard that when you heard the music, you didn't buy. And he didn't even give them a chance to answer. He didn't really want to know whether or not it was true because he loved these boys. So he said, what I'm going to do now I'm going to blow the, the trumpet again. And I'm going to let the music play again. And when you hear it, if you bow down, I'll forget what I heard. All right. All right. Anybody in the house? Yeah. These guys told the king, they said, oh, king, with much respect, they said, live forever. Right. He said, but it won't do no good. Yeah. You can blow it if you want to. You can sound the music, but the results gonna still be the same. Do I have any, any witnesses in the house? In other words, these guys made up their mind when they was young. They were not turning away from God. Amen. Saints of God, I want I want the people of God to understand this. How how important it is for you to bring your children up in the house of God. You remember what I said earlier? That we didn't know nothing else to sing but gospel songs. That's because we come up in a community singing gospel songs. And y'all hear what I'm saying? If you bring your children up praising God, then they won't know nothing else to do but to praise God. 
and when the enemy come at them and try to convince them otherwise, they'll have their mind made up because they have a past that they can look back on and remember that when I praise God, God delivered me. They ought to have a record of when they saw their parents praising and when they heard mama and grandma pray. They saw God do some mighty works on their behalf. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Yes, These guys said, King, live forever. But you don't have to play your music. Our mind is already made up. The king said, in essence, he said, don't you know that I have power to take your life? And they said, King, if you put us in the furnace, it'll be all right. Because one thing for certain, God will deliver us one way or the other. And we won't still bow down to you. Amen. And so, and so the king, he was real upset by now because they had embarrassed him. He gave them a chance and they embarrassed him. They didn't take it. Amen. So the king said, turn the furnace up four times hotter than normal. In his mind, I'm going to cook them fast. Uh -huh. Amen? Yeah. In other words, he would let the other people know that if you defy the king, this is what you got coming. Yeah. But he didn't know that God was working in this also. Uh -huh. He turned the flame up seven times hotter. And by the flame being so hot, it leaked out of the furnace. Right. And when the men were supposed to throw them in there, they fell in first. Right. And then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell in also. Uh -huh. Well, while they was in the furnace, and the furnace was seven times hotter, and they should have burned up quick, the king gave them a few moments, and he decided to look in. And when he looked in, he didn't just see three, he saw four. Ain't God good? Yes. When you're going through the furnaces of life, God will be right there with you. If you have faith in him and believe that he's able. No matter whether you're struggling physically, mentally, or spiritually. All you got to do is have faith in the almighty God. The Bible said, when he looked, he saw four in the furnace. Uh -huh. And he says to his counselors and governors, he said, didn't we throw in three? And they say, yeah, Lord, it was three. Uh -huh. He said, but now I see four. And he said, and the fourth one looks like the Son of God. All right. Well, now you know, could nobody have given him that information uh -huh. but God himself. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. How many of you know that the enemy believed God and they tremble when he saw God walking around in the furnace yes, with the three Hebrew boys. Uh -huh. He called them out of the furnace. Uh -huh. I'm about to believe All right. that the reason why he called them out uh -huh. was because he understood now that in spite of his intention, God's plan is what's gonna come to fruition. Yes, I wish I had somebody that would get that today. Amen? You're worried about your circumstances. You're worried about your situation. You're concerned about what you're going to have to deal with tomorrow. You're worried about who you're going to have to answer to. All you got to do is have faith in God. And like he was in the furnace with the Hebrew boys, he'll be whatever you need him to be with you. Ain't that good news? Yeah. Amen. And I can see him calling out to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, come forth out of the furnace. Amen. Amen. And the Bible say that they came forth. Uh -huh. Something that kind of stood out to me was that they were just walking around in the furnace. All right. Wasn't in no hurry to get out. 
what you all irritated about? Uh -huh. <laughs> what are you so frustrated about? Because you're going through something. All right. If God is with you, All right. come on somebody. All right. I don't care how hot the fire is, All right. if God is with you. Yeah. These guys wasn't in no hurry to come out the furnace. All right. Why? Because the Lord was there with them. Yes, I don't know who I'm talking to. But you're anxious. All the week you've been anxious about a situation. And yet you're praying to God. Uh -huh. Am I talking to anybody? Yes, you've been dealing with some stuff. And you've been trying to convince yourself. Uh -huh. That God had it. Yeah. But if you know he had it. Amen. What are you losing sleep for? If you're giving it to a God that don't sleep uh -huh. or slumber, All right. why don't you go on to bed? Yeah. All right. All right. If these guys can stay in the furnace uh -huh. and not be worried, yeah. what are you concerned about your problems? Uh -huh. If God be your God, yeah. you don't have no worries. All right. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 They, were, they were embracing this fiery moment yeah. with Jesus. Amen. I wish y'all could get this. All right. Amen. I don't know. Y'all looking at me kind of strange. <laughs> they were embracing this fiery moment uh -huh. with Jesus. Yeah. Anybody get that? Right. I'm in the fire. Yeah. Yeah. And it's seven times harder. All right. But I'm just embracing it. Right. With Jesus. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. I'm going through some stuff. All right. Got a lot of mess on my back. Right. But God is with me. Right. Huh? In other words, I believe that from, from what I'm getting from this is that these guys wasn't in no hurry to get out of their situation because God was in their situation with them. And if, if, my brothers and sisters, if I can be in the presence of God in trouble, anybody get this? If the only time I can be in his presence right. is when I'm having some problems. Anybody getting it? Yes. All right. Come on, give me some more problems. Yes. Come on with your problems. All right. Anybody in the house? Yes. Anybody in the house? Right. Now, I'm dealing with some stuff, but God is with me. And if God is with me, I'm going to be all right. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego only heard about Jesus. Mm. They were living for him. They were serving him. They were obeying him. They were the perfect example of who God called them to be. But they only heard about him. Now I'm in the furnace. Right. I get to meet him. Y'all yeah. missed that one, didn't you? Yeah. I know that nobody wants no troubles. Yes. Amen? Yes. But my troubles uh -huh. come to get me closer to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Come on, somebody. Right. Come on. Come on, somebody. King Nebuchadnezzar didn't know that what he was doing, he was getting ready to consummate the relationship of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego with Jesus. Yes, All right, right. Yes. I believe they knew. They didn't know how he was coming. All right. Because they told him as a king, regardless of how this thing turned out, All right. we're going to have to see your face no more. All right. yeah. 
Come on, somebody. In other words, they knew that if they died, they're going to be with the Lord. Yeah. If the Lord delivered them, they was going to sin. They're going to be in his company, saints of God. Listen, stop crying about your problem and embrace your troubles. Because I believe the sooner we embrace them, the sooner he'll show up. You see, before they threw them in there, I believe the Lord was already there waiting on Come on, somebody. When you are a child of God, how do you know? How do you, how do you come to the conclusion that, that he was already waiting on them? Because listen, fire can't pierce the glory of God. All right. Tell your neighbor, fire, fire. fire. can't pierce, can't pierce. The, glory the glory of God. What are you talking about? Yeah. Well, the Bible say that when the king called them out, they looked just like they did when they went in. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. The reason why I know he was already waiting on them because when he when they threw them in, they threw them into his glory. Yeah. Huh? But when they threw them into his glory, his protection. Yeah. His protection was already waiting on them. Come on, somebody. When the devil set a trap for you. God is already yeah. waiting on you. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And, and, and y'all heard the song say, I don't look like yeah. what I've been through. Yeah. Come on, somebody. The reason I don't look like what I've been through because when I came out or before I went through it, God already had his glory around me. But he said, there's some things you just gonna have to go through. Yes. Yes. Amen? Not that it's gonna hurt you, but you just gotta go through it. Yes. Because I'm trying to get you closer to me. Yes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Yes. I, I want you to have a better relationship with me and now you'll get a chance to meet me personally. Yes. 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 Here it is, the furnace turned up seven times harder. All right. Killed the two men that threw them in there. But after they fell in, Jesus stepped in and caught his servants. And he protected them. And, and, and the king, when he looked in and he saw Jesus, he said he looked like the son of God. And then he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come on up out of it. You ever thought of that? He didn't call the son of God out. <laughs> huh? He didn't call him out because he didn't throw him in. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? He knew he had no power. All power was in the hand of the living God. Do I have any witnesses in here? All power. It was in God's hand. And Shadrach realized the moment that he saw him in the, in the, in the dungeon, he called him out and he said, it's over. He said, ain't no other God. All right. But the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. Matter of fact, he said in verse 28, he said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Listen, he said, Who have sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him. All you got to do is trust him, saints. Oh, I don't care what you're going through. All you got to do is trust God. And God will send his angels. And now we know he sends his Holy Spirit. And look what he said. He said he sent his angels and he changed the king's words. Mm -mm. What was he saying? He said, this is somebody greater than me. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? The king realized that they served a God that was greater than he was. In essence, I believe he was saying, fellas, now I understand. I understand what
why you didn't bow down to my statue. All right. Because you've been bound before God that's greater than I am, let alone my statue. All right. Anybody here hear what I'm saying? Yes. All right. I don't care what the enemy trying to do to you, you keep bowing to God. Right. And the enemy will succumb to your God. All right. All right. Can't nobody take your job. All right. Can't nobody lay you off. All right. Come on, somebody. They can't take your house. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Right. Unless your God right. says, okay. All right. He said, a God that you trust in. He didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't become a hypocrite. He didn't say, I trust him too. He said, but the God you trust in. He said, he have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve, not worship any God except their own God. All right. I dare you to get it right. All right. I dare you to get it right. Amen. Amen. Embrace what God is doing in your life right now. Amen. Even though you may have brought it on yourself, if you repent and ask God to come into your life, you can embrace it. And say, Lord, for you I live, and for you I'm willing to die. Until you get that, you're not really trusting him. Come on, somebody. If you just trust him when you need something, you ain't trusting him. These, these guys, they could have looked at this thing and said, well, we need to add a few more years to our lives. So we're just going to go ahead and bow down to the king because he's going to put us in the fire. They should have they could have succumbed and said it don't make sense to die. And all we had to do is bow. Right. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So many times we give up our blessings to try to save our lives. But Jesus said, Bless the day that endure it unto the end. He said, they are the one that will receive a crown of life. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? These guys made up their mind that I'm not, I'm not willing to trade for a few years when I can have eternal life. Anybody in the house? I'm not, I'm not going to tell a lie to keep a job and I cast my soul into hell. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to lie for you to protect your marriage and send my soul to hell. Anybody in the house? I'm not going to give up my right for your wrong and cast my soul into hell. I'd rather take my punishment down here and live forever. Ain't that good news? Tell your name, I'm going to live forever. Come on, tell somebody, I'm going to live forever. Uh -huh, and I tell them, because I'm going to do what's right. The Bible said, Nebuchadnezzar said, he called them out the fiery furnace and said that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own God. Amen. In essence, what he was saying was that they don't never have to worry about me no more. Because I'm convinced that their God is God. Amen. When I look back, I'm inspired by what God has done in my life. And I'm embracing where I am right now. Amen. And I'm excited, ecstatic about where I'm going. Right. Do I have any witnesses in here? Yeah. Come on, stand up on your feet and give God a hand praise. Yeah. Come on, give God a hand praise. Yeah. Come on, praise Him like you love Him. Yeah. Embracing the future, amen? Yeah. Embracing the future because I want my future to be with the Lord. Amen. 
Come on, somebody. Anybody had that testimony? In order for us to make certain that our future will be with the Lord, Amen. that we got to learn to trust Him. Amen. In all our ways, acknowledge Him. And He, the Bible says, will direct that path. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you.